In this podcast, we're going to talk about a type of equation called an equation which is quadratic in form. And what I mean by quadratic in form is it's not going to have the perfect form of a standard quadratic equation. Here's the perfect form of a standard quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Let's examine the form a little bit. X doesn't have to be a pretty little number like this simple. If x is a number, then 2x is a number. So I could have a times 2x squared plus b times 2x plus c, and that would still be a quadratic uh, equation. It could be uglier than that. It could be like 2x minus 1. Then I could have a times 2x minus 1 squared plus b times 2x minus 1 plus c equals 0, and that would still be a quadratic equation. And in fact, there are a whole mass of equations. They're called equations quadratic in form, in which they don't look quadratic when you first look at it, but a very simple technique can show that they can be solved by the quadratic uh, methods. We have two methods so far. We can solve quadratic equations by factoring, but when we find an equation which won't factor it, we can solve any quadratic equation by the quadratic formula. So let's take a look at some of these equations, quadratic in form, and see why they are actually quadratic. In this first example here, <coughs> I don't have a nice, neat pretty number like x. I have an ugly number like x minus 1 over x. But if x is a number, then x minus 1 over x is also a number. So here I have a times the number squared plus b times the number plus c. Here c is 5 equals 0. That's exactly the same form as a quadratic. But instead of having a nice pretty little x here, I have this ugly number x minus 1 equal x. Now to demonstrate that they're the same. Remember, this x, since it doesn't have an exponent, means x to the 1. So all you really need for a quadratic equation is to have your three constants, a, b, and c. They don't have to be anything visible. a could be 1. Then you wouldn't even see it. And you have to have your first coefficient, your first exponent, be twice your second exponent of your variable part. So let's take a look at this one here. I've got this ugly number, x minus 1 over x, so I'm going to do what's called an ugly substitution. I'll use u for ugly. Remember earlier this semester when we were doing uh, square root property and we used m for mess? Well, here we use u for ugly. And my variable is going to be x minus 1 over x, and remember, any number is the same as that number to the 1 power. So here we have where our first variable expression is a 2, and that's twice as big as our second variable expression exponent, which is a 1. So I'm going to let the ugly number be this number. So I'll say u is equal to x minus 1 over x, and so if that's u, then u squared would just be that number squared, x minus 1 over x squared. So if I see an expression, x minus 1 over x squared, I can just replace it with u squared. If I see an expression, x minus 1 over x, I can just replace it with its ugly number, u. So here's x minus 1 over x squared, so I replace it with u squared. Here's x minus 1 over x, <coughs> so I replace it with u. I don't do anything to the rest, it just stays the same. And now you see a nice quadratic equation in u, exactly the same form as the quadratic equation in x. Now in this second one, it's a little bit more subtle, because you're going to say, well, that's not going to work here because the first exponent isn't 1 and the second exponent isn't 2. Yeah, but the set first exponent here is twice this second exponent, so it's still going to work. Now to see the powers, here's what I'm going to do. Instead of calling that x minus 1, I'll call it x to the negative 1. It's not x minus 1, it's x to the negative 1. Instead of calling it x to the negative 1, I'll call it x to the negative 1 to the 1 power. And this would be 3 times x to the negative 1 to the 2 power. So my ugly number is x to the negative 1. The plus 4 equals 0 doesn't change. So here's my ugly number, x minus 1. 1 to the 1, and you can now see that the first exponent is twice the second exponent. So my 
substitution here would be let u be x to the negative 1, u squared is x to the negative 2. And now I've got here <coughs> x to the negative 2, so I'm going to change it to u squared, so I'll call that 3u squared. Here I've got x to the negative 1, so I'm going to change that to u. I'm not going to do anything to the plus 4 equals 0. And here again, I have a nice quadratic equation. Now you might say, well, okay, if you solve that, is that the answer to the question? Not exactly. But this is a step that you have to go through. You have to take this equation that doesn't look like a quadratic. You have to substitute for the ugly number and turn it into something that does look like a quadratic. Go ahead and try this third one for yourself. You can see the structure here. What I'm going to ask you to do is just stop the recording, do a substitution, figure out what your ugly number is going to be, do the substitution, and write it as a quadratic. Okay, let's see if you got what I got. For my ugly number now, you remember I need something to the 1 power here and something to the 2 power here. So for my ugly number, I'm going to take this whole thing, that whole thing there, x minus 2 to the 1 third. That's going to be my ugly number. And to get the 1 power on it, I'll just put it, I'll just put it in a bracket and put it to the 1 power. And then this would be x minus 2 to the 1 third squared. And if you multiply the 2 times the 1 third, you get the 2 thirds. So here's your 1 power, here's your 2 power. Let's do the u sub, my ugly number is x minus 2 to the 1 third. So here I have my ugly number squared, so I'll call that u squared minus 5. Here I have my ugly number, so I'll put minus u plus 2 equals 0 because I don't change that part. And here I've made it look just like the quadratic equation up here at the top. <clears throat> now, how do you use this technique, this ugly number, to actually solve problems? So example 1 left the x off there. Example 1, x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 3 equals 0. Solve doesn't mean solve for ugly number. There's no ugly number there. Solve means solve for x. So let's see what's going to happen. Right now this isn't quadratic. It's not a number squared minus 4 times a number plus 3. So how could we define an ugly number so that this worked out? Well if I let this be my ugly number, the, the x squared, then this is ugly number to the 1 power, and x to the 4th would be ugly number x squared to the 2 power. Multiply the power by the exponent, you get the 4. So my substitution is, let the ugly number be x squared. Then the ugly number squared is x squared squared, which is x to the 4th. So if I have an x to the fourth, I can pull it out and put u squared. If I have an x squared, I can pull it out and put in a u. So for my x to the fourth, I put in u squared, minus 4. For my x squared, I put in u, plus 3, equals 0. Now, what do I do with that? Well, I solve this by factoring. So I get u minus 3 times u minus 1 equals 0, and that tells me that u is equal to 3 or 1. Now I'm going to get solutions corresponding to each one of these. I'm expecting to get four solutions because of this power of 4, but some of these solutions may repeat, so we may not end up with four distinct solutions. But let's go ahead and work this out. Remember this is my ugly number u, and I'm saying the ugly number is 3. Well, my ugly number was x squared, so this says x squared equals 3. <clears throat> well, uh, you recall earlier we had the square root property. If we had a perfect square equal to a constant, a mess squared equal to k, then the mess was equal to, positive or negative, the square root of k. So this would be positive or negative, the square root of 3. So there's two solutions, x equals positive the square root of 3, and x equals negative the square root of 3. And the same thing happens with the 1. 
this is saying u equals 1, but u is my ugly number. It's x squared, so this is saying x squared equals 1. So that's m squared equals k. m is equal to positive or negative. The square root of k, well, the square root of 1 is just 1. So this is just plus or minus 1. So I actually did get four solutions. My solutions are plus 1, minus 1, plus the square root of 3, and minus the square root of 3. Okay, well that was a fairly simple one. Let's go on to one that really looks ugly. Here I think it's pretty obvious what the ugly number is, x minus 1 over x. So I'm just going to start off, let u, the ugly number, be x minus 1 over x. And notice that this is x minus 1 over x to the 1 power. And that the next one is the same ugly number to the 2 power, so that is the form of the good old quadratic formula. So, uh, ugly number is x minus 1 over x. Ugly number squared is ugly number x minus 1 over x squared. Well, that's what this is. This is x minus 1 over x squared. So that's ugly number squared minus ugly number minus 6 equals 0 u squared minus u minus 6 factors easily. It factors into u minus 3 times u plus 2 equals 0. And that tells me that u is either equal to 3 or to negative 2. Now again, solve doesn't mean solve for u. There wasn't any u in the original problem. It means solve for x. So I'm going to go have to get rid of this u now and replace it with what it means in terms of x. And over here we defined it. We said u was x minus 1 over x. So since u is 3, then x minus 1 over x is 3. And that gives us a linear rational. And there's two terms, and the common denominator is x. So I'll just multiply each term by the common denominator. On the left, the x's cancel, and I get x minus 1 equals 3x. I subtract x from both sides. Negative 1 equals 2x. x equals negative 1 half. And we repeat this over here with the negative 2. We say u or x minus 1 over x is equal to negative 2. That's two terms, common denominator x. Multiply both terms by the common denominator. x minus 1 equals negative 2x. Now this time, to keep my x positive, I'm going to bring my 2x over here. And I'm going to take my 1 over here. You don't have to do it that way, but that's the way I like to do it. So I'm going to be adding 2x to both sides. So on this side, I'll get 3x. I'll be adding 1 to both sides. So on this side, I'll get 1. And x is equal to 1 third. Well, let's try one last example. Kind of hard to get to it here. OK. <clears throat> here, my ugly number is going to not be x, because then this wouldn't work. I'd have to the 1 fifth power and to the 2 fifth power. I want to the 1 power and the 2 power. So I'm going to make the whole x to the 1 fifth my ugly number. And then this is x to the 1 fifth to the 1. And this is x to the 1 fifth to the 2. 2 times 1 fifth gives you 2 fifths, so that's x to the 2 fifths. So my substitution is going to be ugly number is x to the 1 fifth. Ugly squared is x to the 2 fifths. So here's x to the 2 fifths, so I replace it by u squared. Here's x to the 1 fifth, so I replace it with u. I don't do anything to the minus 6 equals 0. Well, again, that's a pretty easy factoring. It's u plus 3 times u minus 2 equals 0. And we have to remember that when we say solve, the original equation had no u. So what we are solving for is x. So we can't just take this u equals negative 3 and u equals 2 and say that we've solved it. We got to solve it for x. So I go back to my original definition. U was x to the 1 fifth. 
and we're saying here u is negative 3 so I get x to the 1 -fifth is negative 3 now how do I get rid of a 1 -fifth? <laughs> had a little coughing spell there how do I get rid of an x to the 1 -fifth power well I'm gonna use the old x to the a to the b is x to the a b that is, if I want to change a one-fifth power to a one power, I'm going to have to multiply the one-fifth by five. So what I'm going to do is raise both of these sides to the fifth power. So I'll have x to the one-fifth to the fifth is equal to negative three to the fifth. Well, x to the one-fifth to the fifth, five times one-fifth is 1. So this is just x to the 1, which is x. And that's equal to negative 3 to the 5th, so that's negative 243. You say, wow, can you get a big number like that for x? Yep, just did it. Well, what if u is equal to 2? u is x to the 1 -fifth, so you'd have x to the 1 -fifth is equal to 2. Again, our job is to get rid of the 1 -fifth, change it to a 1. So I'll take my x to the 1 -fifth, and again I'll raise it to the 5. But if I want both sides to be equal, I also have to take my 2 and raise it to the 5. And so I get x is equal to 32. Well, that's how you do equations quadratic in form. Uh, that completes the podcast.